Thank you for listening to Namat's Movie Reviews Podcast, available on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Stitcher. Also, please follow Matt's Movie Reviews on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Reddit, Instagram, and MeWe. And of course, be sure to visit mattsmoviereviews.net for the latest reviews, top 10 lists, and more. Now, on to the show. I got it's enormous. I mean, everybody knows James Bond. Everyone's seen the films. It is a little bit like a plague of locusts. It's crazy with the noise that's created by it. Most of us know James Bond as the dashing British agent 007, but the real James Bond was a man from Philadelphia. Just how did Ian Fleming's 007 get his name? I started it and used it. Do you know why we're making this film? Um, because you want to know what it's like to be a James Bond. My name is Bond. 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 James Bond. Det är mitt liv. Allting som har med James Bond. You can't be an introvert to be a James Bond. It's impossible. Imagine being told the same joke every day for a couple decades. Your name is Bond. James Bond. And he's like, yeah, right, and I'm Donald Duck. Get on the ground, get on the ground. His name, in this case, is going to haunt him. A name is something that identifies you. All it does is pinpoint where you are. He told me that he would kill me. I use that form of searching after my father, who is for sure. All units, we have a location on a homicide suspect. Name, Bond, James. If I was a real James Bond, I would never get caught because James Bond killed plenty of people and he's still out there. See, if he kills somebody, hey, okay, well, that's James Bond. That's the white James Bond. But the black James Bond, oh, he's doing it. It has been both a blessing and a curse. He just admitted that he took it, just lifted it, stole it. There's a lot of James Bonds, right? So I can never get that email address. So my email address is the.other.james.bond. I'm the other one. Hello and welcome to the Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast. I am your host, Matthew Pekovic, and this is episode number 503. Out now in theaters and on demand across the U.S. is The Other Fellow, a documentary that takes on the intriguing premise of chronicling the experiences of those around the world named Bond, James Bond. And joining me now to talk about the documentary is the film's director, Mr. Matthew Bauer. Matthew, I thank you so very much for your time today. Thank you very much. Nice to have another, you're the other Australian Matthew uh, today, which is kind of fun. It is uh, actually an increasingly popular name. I think you're like the third Mac uh, director I've spoken in the last kind of month or so. So uh, I don't know what's yeah. going on there. Maybe like a generational I, thing. I, I think I was born in Adelaide, and I think at the time I was born in Adelaide, Matthew was the most popular name for boys. Mm. Very interesting. And you know, when it comes to a name, you know, Matthew is kind of like a is is a very popular name. It's a biblical name as well. The names though, the name though, James Bond. Um, in itself is popular. But what's been interesting about this is that you were actually, the idea for this came from that you were on the Facebook book of Matthew Bowers. Is, is that correct? Yeah, it was. Do you remember in the early days of Facebook, people were just kind of discovering the form a bit? Yeah. Uh, you know, and there were kind of a lot of kind of wacky groups. I was, I was a member of a group for people who use their cell phones as torches. Do you know what I mean? There was, there was, I was a member of a group for... It was anti-slow walking people. Do you know what I mean? There was just <laughs> random group stuff. And, and we started a group, or I was invited to be a member of a group of, of Matthew Bowers, and it was called Embassy. I think it was designed to sound almost like a crappy club night. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like M-B-A-S-Y, which was the Matthew Bower Appreciation Society. 
And we would talk about these like innoc- very innocuous things, you know, like who's got Matt Bauer at Gmail, you know, who's got Matthew Bauer at Gmail, who's got the Matt Bauer Instagram handle. You, you know what I mean? Those things that you have in life where, you know, when you try and sign up for your email and another person with your name has it. Yeah, yeah. It, it was that way to, 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 that was the kind of stuff we'd talk about. And somewhere in there, it came upon me to type, you know, James Bond, uh, you know, in the people search on Facebook. Uh, and yeah, this project kind of went from there. The interesting thing about looking up for Bond online, from what I know of what you read, is that if your name is James Bond and you try to start a Facebook page, you actually won't let you do that, will it? Because um, they might assume it's a fake identity. Yeah, I mean, what clued me, and and you've seen the film, Matt, and this is very much a part of the fabric of the film, um, is is I was finding it quite hard to find them. Um, You know, and you can imagine if you try and Google for real James Bonds, you're completely out of luck because of all of the noise of James Bond 007 online. Um, And then, yeah, for Facebook, I I noticed quite quickly that they were all called like Bond James or JB Bond, or they'd often put their middle name in there. There weren't any actual James Bonds. And and they eventually told me that it was because Facebook flags you as using a false sort of ID when you try. And I I actually tried to log, I I tried to join Facebook myself uh, as James Bond and confirm this. And what it does is it says, oh, you can create like a fan page. So you can imagine these guys' real name is James Bond. And they go to sign up for a Facebook and it tells them that they can't create a Facebook, but they can create a fan page for James Bond 007. Um, and yeah, so e- even from the start, I was kind of seeing like, especially in this, like the area of like online identity how there was kind of a bit more to this, if you know what I mean, than, than than I was expecting. When it came to that more to this, it seems to me that the stories a lot of these people had kind of almost sound like real life you know, thrillers of the, on their own. Um, there are, you know, there are people that go to jail. There are people that are on the run. Um, <laughs> there are people that um, take on these, uh, always have a kind of obsess- obsessive nature towards this name and take on the personality of, of this uh, James Bond character. I mean, when yep. it came to, when you when you talk to, to some of these different James Bonds around the world and you see the kind of like, not only that they uh, really come from different parts of the world and different stripes of people, different um, sexuality, different color, different uh, uh, geog- geography, um, geographically speaking, it come, you know, there's differences there as well, culturally speaking, but they have these stories that are just so incredible. Um, I think it just goes to show that we as a people, uh, whether you're named James Bond or not, we kind of live in our own little movies, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously, you know, as a filmmaker, we did tend towards stories that had kind of an amount of drama in them. But having the name James Bond points you towards a lot of these almost quite James Bondy situations. It, it causes massive problems when you're dealing with the police, for instance. Mm. Uh, but it also can lead to a degree of sort of like online stalking. And also back to the Facebook thing, they're having to assume a fake online identity to begin with, which is very James Bond. Um, and then kind of where I was coming from this film is, you know, as a film guy, I'm guessing you might have seen some stuff like there's a film called Trekkies that's about Star Trek fans or mm. there's The People versus George Lucas, which is about Star, Star Wars fans when The Phantom Menace was released. And those films, I really like those films, but they're the participants in those films are not what you would call active characters. You know, that they're they're reflecting on an, an event in the past or this this sort of other film series. And they're kind of more like fan films. You know, you know a lot of those fan films that have like scenes at like Comic Con? Yes. For instance, I really didn't want to make that film. I wanted my characters to be extremely active characters. So, yes, they are reflecting on, you know, their connection to the James Bond film series, but they're doing it whilst, you know, in terms of my main characters, you know, for the ornithologist in the film, it's it's whilst he's finding out about this through television and the media and then trying to hunt down Fleming in the process. Mm. For, for Swedish guy, we're watching him in the process of turning himself literally into James Bond because of his missing Nazi father. Um, you know, for for the for the American, the the gay New York James Bond, we're watching him as Spectre is coming out. 
And so his phone then starts ringing, asking him to be in TV commercials. And we're watching him having to like wrestle doing that. Um, you know, for in Indiana, we're watching a guy who's like literally on the run from the police and then imprisoned on a murder charge whilst another guy in the same town called James Bond is getting caught up in that media frenzy. And then in the film, what does become the film's main storyline that we can't really talk about. Yeah. You know, we're watching somebody going through the most harrowing imaginable of situations and having to find a way to escape that. And, you know, I wanted characters who, you know, their stories were very active and very dramatic. Um, not There's another version of this film when everyone just, like, sits back on the couch and has a bit of a laugh. <laughs> um, that's not this movie. When it comes to the James Bond in Sweden or uh, Nibro, uh, Sweden, um, that's really interesting to me because he creates his own James Bond museum and he kind of takes, he really does take on the identity of the Bonds on the screen. Like he really looks the part, dresses the part. He lives the, he lives the world or the best he can anyway, but we, we don't know whether he's a secret agent or not. And I doubt that very much, but um, when meeting him and seeing him kind of take on this kind of personality, um, what does that say to you in regards to how people kind of interact with the cinema world? Because I've, talked to filmmakers before about how regular people are really inspired by what they see on screen. Yeah. Um, I, I did a, I covered a documentary once about a bloke in Philadelphia who, um, his name's not Rocky Balboa, but he decided to become Rocky Balboa to the point where now he does tours around Philadelphia as Rocky Balboa. He takes him to all the different places yeah. where Rocky was filmed there. I mean, it's kind of fascinating to me how sometimes people can really take on the personas of people on screen, even if those personas are as fantastical as a James Bond. Yeah, it's funny you say that. I'm hearing about a lot of this sort of thing on the press tour for this, and I actually hadn't heard about the real Rocky Balboa. I think the guy who Kramer from Seinfeld was inspired yeah. by, I think now does the real Kramer tours um, in New York as well. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, but on, on your question, yeah, I, I, think, I think we as humans are incredibly affected by the cinema um, and especially in relation to this film in kind of how our identities are kind of formed. And I think that applies to both sexes, although, you know, for what we're talking about today, to give it a kind of male slant, um, I've, and specifically in terms of the James Bond films, I think we as men, you know, our concept of masculine identity is hugely shaped by the James Bond films. I mean, yeah. he at least in the 20th century, I think that there is some academia around this map that kind of says that, yes, James Bond was the 20th century archetype of the kind of idealized kind of alpha male um, kind of people kind of think these days, actually the kind of like African-American rapper kind of in like the kind of P Diddy sort of mold mm. may have overtaken that as the absolute thing that teenage boys are wanting to be when they grow up, even though actually there's actually a huge amount of overlap b between the two, you know, if it, money, cars, women, champagne you know that they, they, they do have a lot of similarities to them but yeah with the bond thing you know bond is not just the longest running kind of like screen hero he's also a men's lifestyle brand i mean pe yeah. people think that george lucas invented the merchandising tie-in you know it's james bond that invented the merchandising tie-in i mean it, it's it's what clothes he wears what cigarettes he smokes what alcohol he drinks what car he drives mm. and if you look at that that is absolutely synonymous with the aspirational kind of thing that we as men are meant to have of what clothes we're meant to wear what cars we're meant to drive you you, you know you know that we you know, we 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 dress up in suits and on a fancy night out, we might, you know, go in a nice car, you know, and, and drink champagne and drink martinis. You know, it, it, it it's very kind of in line with kind of, I think, what men are sort of, maybe not, the, the, the classic line about Bond was men want to be him, women want to love him. Hmm. Um, and I think that holds very true. But I think in 2023, I think, we have moved past, you know, that kind of 20th century sort of thinking somewhat these days, you know, and I think in this film, we meet a lot of guys who who don't really want to be James Bond and are a bit sick of being compared to this person. 
uh, all the time. Um, but yeah, I think I wouldn't underestimate how much we, especially as men, are, are formed by by the movies. Um, you know, and not just James Bond. I mean, by you know the action heroes out there. You know, we remember we we were a bit worried about putting a gun on the poster of our film, for instance, you know, because we were like, you know, obviously with all the kind of obvious issues that exist around guns in society, we were like, is that problematic? And then we had a look at other film posters and it's oh, it's everywhere. Yeah, it's everywhere. Pretty amazing how pretty much every, every, like half of film posters are just Liam Neeson or Tom Cruise holding a gun. Yeah. You know, it, if you look, one, it's one of those things, once you see it, you can't unsee it. Mm-hmm. Um, it. It really kind of is everywhere. And kind of in a way, it's definitely James Bond that invented that gun movie poster <laughs> pose. Oh, yeah. Like, I think back to, like, Dr. No, it's like Sean Connery kind of like in hands crossed with a gun uh, in his hand. Yeah, yeah, and and it is it, it it it's pretty much everywhere, and you kind of in your mind you go, is Tom Cruise holding a gun in the Mission Impossible posters? But he he is in a lot of them, hmm. um, you know, and it is it's 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 very it, it's very out there. The Matt's Movie Reviews podcast is brought to you by T Public. T Public is the world's largest marketplace for independent creators to sell their work on the highest quality merchandise, with over one point two million designs. Public is sure to have something you will love. The Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast is brought to you by Amazon, the world's leading online store. Amazon is your first stop to buy a wide range of products at competitive prices with fast delivery times. Amazon is also a world-class entertainment hub that includes Prime Video, Audible, Twitch, Amazon Music, and more. Sign up with Amazon today and experience the best in online shopping and entertainment. Please support Matt's movie reviews on Patreon. Get access to exclusive content, request movie reviews and top 10 lists, and help support my work. Please click on the Patreon link in the description below. I want to talk about how interested it is that you know, Fleming lifted the name himself from our ornithologists and from what I know of ornithologists, like the study of birds, right? Like he was writing, um, yeah. he was in Jamaica, he was writing this novel, he needed a name. There was a guide on birds, birds written by James Bond. He's like, hmm, that's a good name. I'm going to take that and put that in. Do you think something like that could fly these days? I mean, does a person's name need to be, does a person's name, if it shows up as an author's name, is that covered by copyright or anything like that? Or or does that um, is a fair game for anyone's name to be used in a creative uh, context? Yeah, I mean, I mean, from my layman's understanding of it, um, the answer is no, because because you know authors come up with names you know all the time, you know thousands a day, and of course every one of those is going to be someone else's real name, and so I don't think there's an issue there, and I don't think there's an issue with Will Fleming. I mean, Fleming basically saw James Bond on the cover of this book. And decided to to steal the name, which I think he's quite entitled to do. I think the issue is more because when we come in on on James and his wife Mary in the film, they haven't heard about this, so mm. it's no problem. The problem is Fleming then goes on TV and tells the entire world that he stole it from the Philadelphia ornithologist James Bond, and so then of course he's all over the newspaper. He's getting phone calls at night. You know mm. he's having to deal with the fallout so i don't think it's so much an issue of stealing someone's name i think it's more when you then go to the world's press and tell them that 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 becomes problematic and and fleming did this a lot there's the british architect um erno goldfinger (laughs) so he did he did all those classic like 1960s kind of brutalist london um you know like the barbican center and that kind of thing and at the time, a lot of that work was quite controversial, and Fleming hated it. And so Fleming decided to call his villain Goldfinger, mm. and, and he very publicly said, "I'm I'm I'm stealing this Goldfinger guy's name." And Goldfinger got pretty pissed off and went to his lawyers, um, who then sent sort of a letter to Fleming's publishers. And so at the front of Goldfinger, I think it was actually the first ever instance of that famous disclaimer. Um, which was, you know, all, all characters in this work, are completely right. fictional, you know, any, any resemblance that that was there because of Goldfinger. So, I mean, obviously he had kind of better lawyers and better means 
uh, than the Bonds did. That said, though, he was probably one of the very few gold fingers out there. Whereas, yeah. of course, when when Fleming stole the name James Bond, it wasn't just the ornithologist. I mean, we have a guy in our film who's 98 now, um, you know, who was just a regular guy called James Bond who was born in the 30s. <laughs> Um, who then had to deal with all of this when it came up. Um, but yeah, I mean, but James Bond was a very common name. So there were thousands of them out there. I want to um, ask as well, when it comes to um, making money from it, some of these people you know, that have James Bond, they are really kind of reluctant uh, to be part of the whole, you know, whole kind of James Bond world. Other people, though, were kind of clued into it. And they think, you know what? I think I can probably probably make some money out of this. They can be be part of commercials. They can be part of, um, for example, the museum in Israel and such. Do you think when when you are faced with something like that, that's these kind of, um, when you have a name like James Bond and there's all that kind of merchandise tie-ins like you talked about, that the possibility of um, turning this um, situation into something of a gold mine. Do you think it's something that uh, a lot of people would want to jump on, or do you think that the whole kind of bond experience is so overwhelming they tend to t- they tend to try to stuff uh, just um, uh, shield themselves from kind of like the fallout from it, especially when the movies come out? Yeah, I mean, it's like what's your price a bit? I mean, for us on this week, we. we... We, we followed a our James Bond in New York. We found him on the David Letterman show reading the top 10 good yeah. things being named James Bond list. And so we contacted him and what he'd said to us was, um, you, you know, I start getting calls when a Bond film comes out. So when Spectre came out, we were waiting to hear from him when he started getting those phone calls. And of course he did. And because he's James Alexander Bond in the New York phone directory. So mm-hmm. if someone's looking for a real James Bond, they get to him first and call his number first. Um, and so he called me and was like, you're not going to believe this. I've just been asked to be in a, a New Jersey online casino commercial next weekend. And I was like, yes, I'm coming. Um, but I mean, I found that interesting because, all right, he's this guy that says, I hate the name. I hate the name. I hate the name. But he's very happy to go and endorse products as James Bond, you know, for a certain amount of money. And his defense of that is at least this gets to be about me. Do you know what I mean? So if someone's making a James Bond joke, they can at least be making it about a TV commercial that I star in rather than some films that I don't. That's kind of his justification of it. But I think as the audience, we're left somewhat doubtful of the the term he doth protest too much comes to mind. we're, We're left somewhat doubtful about whether or not this guy hates it as much as he does. Right. Or if him hating it is his shtick. Um, or not. And yeah, we're, 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 uh, uh, again, th- that's what I found interesting. That tension, especially in him b- between the two that is caused by those opportunities that, that kind of come up. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I don't know. I don't know. The thing, the thing about this thing is, it's inescapable for these guys. They're stuck in this constant catch-22. So for him, he says he hates it. And I do kind of believe that he does. But then you see him exploiting it to make all this money. So it makes you kind of go, maybe you don't hate it so much. But either way, he can't escape the fact that his name is James Bond. Hmm. And so this name has so formed who he is is that that is it it, it, i think you get what i mean it's hard to figure out exactly where he actually stands on it and that as a filmmaker is very interesting i think when it comes to that james one the guy in new york considering that he's an artist he's a a um a director theater director um i think because that industry um brings with it so many economic uh restrictions and it can be very hard to get by that maybe just maybe he bought himself, you know, this will be a good way for me to fund my next, you know, so-and-so, um, even though, yeah. you know, uh, consequences be damned. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think, you know, he was very happy to take part, um, you know, in this film uh, as well. And, you know, he's done, he's done a lot of, he's done vodka commercials. <laughs> he's done, he's done an art, he did an article in the newspaper where they took him for a James Bond day. And so <laughs> they 
took him, you know, they 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 gave him like a fighting class and then a shooting class and then oh, like God. a fighting class in an Aston Martin. And all the photos are of him having like a terrible time. <laughs> right. But, but but then at the same time, that's his shtick. Yeah. And that's why they ask him to do it. So I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. with And that's the thing. He doesn't know who he would be without the name James Bond. So he yeah. kind of can't, you kind of can't win. How many Bonds, uh, James Bonds have come forward since this movie came out? Because I imagine there's more out there. Yeah, I I, it, I would say actually since we started our, we, you know, we set up like a Facebook page and stuff and we started this process. Um, and actually about half of the James Bonds you see in the film did kind of come to us in one way or another. The Swedish James Bond is a good example because at first the Swedish James Bond was everything I didn't want in my movie. Mm-hmm. You, you know, I didn't want it to be about like some, because, you know, you see a lot of guys on Facebook who are just like, th- there's a lot of like Indians who've made a fake James Bond or, you know, JB Bond or whatever account, uh, you, you know, and it's clearly just someone who's, you know, made made an online account as James Bond, and there's not really much to that. And so the Swedish James Bond I skipped over in my initial search because I wasn't really after lookalikes and that kind of thing. Yeah. The thing was I'd spoken to so many real James Bonds who were born with that, that the film at that stage had quite an overwhelming negativity to it. And you, you can't do 90 minutes you can't do 90 minutes of guys called James Bond complaining. And I, I do worry with our audience coming to this film that they think it's going to be 90 minutes of James Bond's complaining about how bad it is to be James Bond, which if you've seen the film, isn't really what this movie is. No. Uh, but yeah, when we found the Swedish James Bond, he was a guy who loved James Bond and loved the name James Bond so much he changed himself to it. So by having him in, we were kind of able to really balance out the others if if you know what i mean like a like a dessert <laughs> like a palate cleanser if you will well um, i think it, it speaks to the nature of just uh humankind right i mean if we're everyone who wears it down another person has it up everyone who has a a negative experience another person can turn that same situation to a positive yeah no absolutely and then you know with there's some who've a lot have started kind of following our like facebook page we've got this one German guy called James Bond who's like clearly very excited about this film <laughs> he's, he's that you know the you know the first person that always likes your social media is <laughs> this guy um but yeah and then uh, in terms of balancing it out there is a, again th- there's a very large swath of this film which even though a lot of the online reviewers are ruining it already um we're trying to not talk about so it's left for the audience to discover. But I'll say there is a, a story in the film that does include the ultimate positive use of the name James Bond. Yeah. Um, and when I heard that story was actually the very first I came across. So when I first contacted the James Bonds, that character wrote back to me and told me his story. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God. Uh, but also, how does that work? And it was only when I spoke to the other James Bonds that actually what he was telling me made more sense. Um, and for him, yeah, it, it 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 does end on a note of quite profound, almost sci-fi use of the name James Bond. And so, yeah, I think by the end of the film, we have very much achieved that Gandhi-esque balance you're talking about, Matt. Well, it is a, a fascinating documentary and one that in a million years I wouldn't even think that someone would even broach because I didn't even want to think about that anyone was named, <laughs> anyone but James Bond was named James Bond and that there's so many around the world of different stripes and from different uh, places around the world. It's just so fascinating. And for everyone out there listening, the other fellow available now across the US in theatres and on demand here in Australia, it's available on SBS On Demand. Um, I really recommend people check this film out because it's just such a fascinating exploration into how the pop culture a world kind of clashes with the real world and the consequences of that. And Matthew Bauer, thank you so very much for your time today. Uh, congratulations on the movie. I know a lot of people are talking about it. A lot of people are fascinated with it. And I think you did a really good job here. I'm really interested to see about what you do going forward. And, you know, when that next movie comes out, please reach out. I'd love to talk to you again. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, there's no Aussie James Bonds uh, in, in the film. I'd, I always wondered what, like, an Australian, a really heavily Australian accented James Bond, ha- how they would fit into this film. 
Um, but yeah, but thank you very much for having us on today, Matt. Much appreciated. Thank you for watching the Matt's Movie Reviews channel. Please subscribe for more reviews, podcast interviews, and exclusive content. Also, if you would like to request a review and support my work, please join my Patreon via the link in the description below.